Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video, and welcome to my review of this massive case here. This is the Thermaltake The Tower 900. I don't understand, The Tower 900 sounds kind of like a weird name. I personally don't like the name, but there's a lot to go over in this chassis, so let's jump straight into it. So the first thing I'll start with is the design of the exterior and then we'll move on to the interior stuff afterwards. Now exterior wise, you have three panels of this beautiful tempered glass here. It's five millimeters thick, a little bit thicker than some of the other stuff on the industry, but pretty, pretty standard to be honest. Uh, beautiful presentation though that it gives the interior of the case here. Uh, it's slightly smoked. You've got these really massive thumb screws here on the outside uh, that hold the glass on. There is a rubber pad that goes underneath those. And these thumb screw here are, uh, they're kind of hard to grip, but you don't have to tighten them very tight, so that's okay. And they're uh, metallic. They look really good in my opinion and kind of match the exterior aesthetic of the case really well. One complaint I have though is a lot of these uh, thumb screws, and by a lot I mean probably three out of the you know uh, 12 that you have here, are actually a little bit crooked. They don't go in straight, like the, the drill that was drilling it was put in a little bit crooked or something, and that bothers me a little bit. Now this is a $250 case, so little tiny manufacturing defects and stuff like that, I won't knock it too hard considering how massive it is and how well it competes with much more expensive cases on the market, even though there isn't anything exactly like it, obviously. But um, you know, little things like that, I still want to point out to anybody that's buying it. Don't necessarily expect the best quality control on this case here. There are a few little blemishes and stuff, a little bit more on the interior that I'll get to later. Now, along the front here, you've uh, got your five and a quarter inch bay. You do have one external five and a quarter inch bay. Then you've also got the ventilation that you have on all of the sides of the glass touches here. These are actually filtered, but they're not like removable sections. So in order to clean them out, you'd have to like get something down in there and spray them outwards. The uh, top panel is actually plastic, but they did an incredibly good job of making the plastic paint job here match with the metallic paint job. So it's hard to tell with the naked eye that it's plastic. You have to touch it and feel that it's cold uh, on the metal parts, on the steel parts here, and then uh, you realize the plastic isn't as cold and obviously the sound of it as well. But when I first saw it, I, I wasn't even sure that that was plastic until touching it. Uh, so aesthetically, I think it looks good, and there is a metal grate that goes along the top. Uh, at least I believe it's metal. It's, it's cold to the touch and sounds like metal, <laughs> but uh, there's a metal grate that goes along the top, and interestingly enough, uh, your wires actually in the back run through these little holes in the back uh, into the center of the chassis because the motherboard is mounted in the center and it's rotated 90 degrees, so you've got your ports and stuff on your motherboard facing upwards, so the cables actually go up inside the top, and I think it's a really pleasing aesthetic because it makes cable management really easy when you just have to have them go behind this big box of a case and uh, they, they, the case is so large and where the holes are, are so centered that your cables aren't gonna be fanning out from behind it. So if you're looking dead onto the case, there's no way you're gonna see the cables. It hides them really well. And on the front, you do have four USB 3.0 ports. I appreciate that. Of course, I would have liked to see like USB Type C with USB uh, 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit ports. But again, it's a $250 chassis and it came out before, a little bit before that was getting really popular. Uh, it did come out this year, but a lot of cases still haven't moved over to that. But having the extra, the, the four USB 3.0 ports is definitely a plus, um, especially on a chassis that's this large and a chassis that has 
really hard IO to get to. You really don't wanna to have to be plugging in and unplugging stuff here all the time. So definitely like to have a couple of extra ports on the front there, that, that's good to see. Now another thing I'll say about the exterior, another little uh, blemish that I noticed that bothered me is over here on the side, right here on this, uh, it's actually on the metal part, not the plastic part there's a little bit of extra powder coating. It's like a little line where it's thicker and you can tell really easily like at a glance that it's thicker and that bothers me quite a bit. I don't know how well the camera is gonna pick that up in the B-roll, but it is there and it is noticeable. So again, little things like that where, you know, it is a $250 case, which is expensive, but considering the caliber of this case, the size of the case and the markets that it competes in, that's not a crazy expensive price and you can oftentimes find it for a little bit cheaper than that. Now the case stands about an inch, inch and a half off of the ground. It's got the little, uh, feet down here they're plastic feet and uh, they they do a good job of just allowing the case to breathe but uh, you don't really have many like bottom mounted fans so it's not a super necessary thing I do think it gets a good aesthetic though and I like that moving along to the side you actually have these uh, giant fan filters right here and these are a little bit of a finer fan filter than the one that's on the side here but still I would have liked to see something that's more fine when it comes to the fan filter to do a better job of, of dust filtration uh, not a huge deal though and there's actually buttons that you press up along the top here and the side panel comes out like this and you can take the whole thing off so there you've got the fan filter it's magnetic you can take that off and uh, these right here I think are, are pretty well built it's a pretty solid solid mechanism there so um, it's a good design and it does make the, uh, cleaning them out really easily uh, easy which is important there are some cases that it's really hard to get to the fan filters and that's extremely frustrating and in this case for the main fan filters which is this is where your main intake is gonna be uh, you just press the little button and you're good to filter, uh, good to clean it. So uh, that's great. Now along the back, you also have uh, mounts for two 120 or 240 millimeter fans. You can use those as obviously intake or exhaust. And you do have a fan filter back there as well. Uh, it's magnetic, you can clean that one off pretty easy. So all the fan filters overall are pretty easy to get to this. And there is also one along the front here that covers basically the front, or sorry, along the back here that covers from the back to about halfway towards the front. Uh, so that the power supply has a filter and you can pull that one off, it's magnetic. I do wish it was actually uh, one that slid on rails instead so that it was a little bit easier to get back in there because you kind of have to give it a good push to get it to magnetically latch and try and align it right by hand it's a little bit frustrating would have liked to see something that was just a slide out tray with little plastic rails or something myself but at least it's there so your power supply is filtered and that's in my personal opinion the most important thing to keep filtered the last thing i'll talk about on the exterior though is uh, uh, along the back here there's a couple of things so first off you do have captive thumb screws and that's something that i really appreciate i think every case needs to move the, their side panels to captive thumb screws i understand things like glass obviously not having that but anything that's metal should have a captive thumb screw and these have that so it's great, you don't have to worry about losing them and stuff like that. Uh, good, good job there, thermal take. One weird quirk that I noticed though, is where the power supply cutout is in the back. So that the power supply actually mounts on the inside in this little bracket. And then you, you mount the bracket to the power supply and then you mount the bracket inside the case with the power supply already you know, connected to the bracket. And weirdly enough, there is about a, like I'd say a little bit over an eighth of an inch, not quite a quarter of an inch um, gap between the back and where the back of the power supply actually is. So you've got this little spacing in there that isn't filtered or anything. Dust could potentially get in there. It's kind of weird looking. Uh, I kind of understand why they did it, but I don't think it was the best design choice. And it seems like it was something that they were ready to release it and decided just not to fix that, even though it's a very obvious thing that's like, Why'd you do that? So to move on to the interior, I'm actually gonna start with the interior of the top panel because as I said, all of your cables come in through the back through the little holes and mount vertically in your uh, motherboard because uh, your motherboard IO is actually at the top of the case in right in the center, which is again, a kind of a weird place, right? Uh, it's not very common that you see you know, the dead center of the case being where your graphics card cables plug in, right? So a little bit uh, weird, but I really like the design aesthetic myself and I think it's great for cable management. So if you open up the interior uh, panel here, you will uh, notice that on the top of the panel, there is dust filtration in case you have that set up as intake. You're probably gonna want that as exhaust, you know, uh, air, hot air naturally goes up a little bit. Uh, not a huge effect there as we know, but it's just something, you know, generally you use the top as exhaust. That's pretty common. Uh, so nice to see that there's filtration there in case you decide to do something different though like you decide to do intake up there and just helps keep things clean now taking off this top panel here is really weird and by that i mean you feel like you're gonna break it so you actually have to grab from the back and you have to yank the panel up like this and it has the little plastic like clip things that come undone when you do that 
Now they feel robust. I've taken the top panel off probably like eight or nine times and it hasn't broken yet. It doesn't seem like they're getting weaker or anything and there's enough of them. I don't think that you're gonna have troubles with the top panel like, you know, breaking and you know, not being a good experience because then your top panel doesn't work. But it's something to keep in mind. You do feel like you're gonna break it. You have to give it some serious force. Luckily, it's not attached to the I.O. So you're not gonna yank the I.O. cables as you do that. So that's a, a good thing that they thought about there. But for something that has dust filters and something that where you know your I.O. plugs in, I would like a little bit more robust of a mechanism for opening that up. I mean, I feel like the mechanism for getting your fan filters, you know, is, is more robust than, than being able to get to your I.O. So I would like to see something I don't know exactly what the solution there would be. Uh, again, it doesn't seem like it's something that's gonna break super easy. It has pretty thick plastic clips, but if they do break, it's really gonna suck. So if you do plan to get this case, I'd recommend one of the first things you do is get a good sized USB hub, a quality USB 3.0 hub for all of your peripherals and stuff. And that way you just run one USB cable in here, your display cables, and hopefully never have to take the top panel off again until you change cases or decide to get like more monitors or something like that. Now along the top, you also do have your uh, mounting spots that you put your uh, 120 or 140 millimeter fans that you have at the top. There's one in the front chamber and one in the back chamber. The one in the back chamber is centered, the one in the front chamber is off center a little bit to, so it doesn't interfere with your graphics cards and stuff. Uh, just a decent fan spot for airflow. It's really, uh, uh, you can use it for a variety of things, but you're probably gonna use it as exhaust. And on the interior of the case, uh, the front section here, it's gonna allow a little bit of airflow to be pulled across like your VRMs and stuff. So it's good that they have one. And I actually do think that the placement being closer to the CPU is more important than it being closer to the GPUs so that you get a little bit more airflow across your VRMs and your RAM heat sinks there. Now moving on to the uh, front section of the interior here, you've got your motherboard that mounts here. It does support, as far as I understand, up to, I think it's SSI, -E -E, SSI CEB motherboards, I think is the biggest that it'll go. But basically anything you can throw at it is uh, what you're gonna be able to fit in here from uh, ATX to EATX to XLATX, all those should fit in there just fine. Uh, what I have in here is a uh, standard ATX board, but you can fit bigger if needed. Nicely enough, the motherboard tray is actually removable and has these little screw hangers in there uh, that actually hold the tray on. So you can unscrew the thumb screws on the tray and it doesn't just fall out. It will stay there. You have to lift up on the tray and pull it out. That's something that I do appreciate. And uh, you can, uh, that way you can get, you know, your motherboard and your graphics cards and everything kind of mounted to that. And then boom, put that in there and uh, hang it up and then put the thumb screws in. I think it's a great design. Just keep in mind that in order to do it, uh, you actually have to take out the little bottom section there that has uh, the grommets in it for cable organization down there. You have to unscrew those thumb screws. It's a pretty simple uh, process, but then you can pull the motherboard tray down and, and get it out. But it, it is something in there that it's gonna hold it in there. So you're not gonna have the motherboard tray just fall out and everything break or whatever. So a good mounting mechanism there. And I love being able to mount my motherboard outside of the case and in fact, you could do a test uh, run outside of the case without having to like jankily mount it on the box. You know, you can put it on the tray here. Uh, so I, I appreciate that from Thermaltake. As you move down in uh, more towards the interior of the case here, down towards the bottom, you've got this kind of box looking section here and it uh, uh, actually houses quite a bit of stuff in there. So not only do you have like your Thermaltake logo and stuff like that, but up top here, you have two three and a half inch or two and a half inch hard drive bays. That's your uh, primary mounting location that you're gonna wanna put your hard drives in. I don't think that you would really wanna use the other locations that I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, generally two hard drives is gonna be enough because honestly, if you need more storage when it comes to like hard drive mechanical storage than the two that you can fit in there, you probably should be offloading that to a NAS because it's probably really valuable valuable data anyway. So as an example, I have my two four terabyte hard drives in here and that's what I use for games and I, I don't need more than that in my workstation. I've got my server for all my other uh, storage needs. On the side of that little uh, box section down there though, you do actually have a mount for an SSD. So a two and a half inch SSD mount or two and a half inch hard drive mount. Uh, now that is actually a little bit of a caddy that you can mount the SSD to and you can either hang it on the side of the box or you can hang it on the back of the case which kind of presents it to the front a little bit better. Whereas hanging it on the box presents it to the side a little bit better. One complaint that I actually have here is it only comes with two of the two and a half inch hard drive caddies there. Uh, from the get-go, which normally isn't a huge complaint, right? You have two of them, that's no big deal. A lot of people are moving to M.2 and especially somebody that's buying a case and building a system in something of this caliber, uh, they're probably gonna be using M.2 and probably won't need more than two, two and a half inch drives. And in fact, that's the setup I'm personally gonna be going with. 
but in the case that somebody wants to have four two and a half inch drives mounted in here and doesn't want to have to use their two hard drive spots or their other hard drive spots again more on that in a minute then in order to get a hold of those you actually have to contact thermal take support they don't have like a section for accessories to this case where you can buy replacement io parts or you can buy replacement hard drive caddies or ssd caddies because uh, and, and personally that's something that i would really like to see in a case that's this giant and this caliber and this enthusiast grade that's something that's kind of important to me uh, as you know an example like the hard drives what if i wanted to just fill this thing up with hard drives i wanted to use it as a uh, hard drive system like i uh, you know for whatever reason that's what you wanted to do you should have the options with a case that's this large you should have the flexibility to do whatever you want and when they remove some of that flexibility by uh, making it hard to get a hold of accessories that does frustrate me so thermal take you guys could really do better on offering more accessories for this uh for this case and for your other cases in general is just have like a little accessory section where you can buy all the little unique parts for it and i mean even if they take a little bit while a little while to arrive it's better than having to contact the customer service for it most people don't want to have to do that anyway rant over so uh the little box there is also where your five and a quarter inch drive mount now this box also has cable management holes on it so that you can route some of your cables uh not really so much for tubing but again definitely you could route some like sata cables and power cables right through there up to your ssds uh there's also obviously a lot more cable management space under where the uh, rear ssd mount here is uh you can run tubes and stuff like that through there. that's a huge cutout there so you can do whatever you want with and you've also got your uh, pump mounts in here now pump reservoir combos is really what most people go with and what looks best in this case is just having a really tall pump reservoir combo unit in here one on either side so that you know you have this kind of symmetrical look of two of them or asymmetrical if you want to do two different sizes or something like that uh, but those are pump mounts there nice to see those and there is actually a cutout below those so if you needed to run some kind of cable under through there or whatever you'd be able to do that um, or if you wanted to run your pump cable potentially on the bottom of the case that is something that's possible to do and the last thing i want to say about the uh, front section of the case is you do have a single 120 or 140 millimeter fan on top of that box section there like i said that actually does pull air from the uh, rear of the case and maybe a little bit from kind of the bottom because there's a little bit of a uh, uh, holes down there for that but uh, you can put one there to give a little bit more airflow across the inside there. I'd recommend mounting one there. I also think it's a pretty good looking location for that. Now to move on to the back section, it's actually a little bit less exciting in here. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on because it's a lot of space for radiators. So on either side of this case, you can fit a 560 millimeter radiator. That is a quad 140 millimeter radiator and you could fit it in push pull. And in fact, you could fit an 80 millimeter thick radiator in push pull, 560 millimeters on either side. So in that case, assuming you're using normal 25 millimeter thick fans, that's just absolutely insane. Now you're gonna be kind of cramped for cable management and stuff if you really do decide to go for two 80 millimeter thick radiators in push pull, uh, but it's something that's possible. It will fit there without slamming into your power supply. But also along these sides here is if you decide not to mount radiators or fans there, which you have the uh, radiator brackets that come with it, but uh, you can also mount hard drives there. Now it only has four hard drives that you can mount and they're in sections of two hard drives per per mount so you can take one out so you have a little more space for fans or whatever uh, but again you can only have four hard drives mounted up in here and so people that maybe would like to do more than a total of six three and a half inch drives you know you, it'd be nice to be able to order the accessories for that and those do mount wherever uh, you want location wise when it comes to that um, the one thing I will say is the mounts for the radiators though they only have three mounting locations it's basically on the bottom or the top or obviously bottom and top together or one right in the center uh, so you don't have uh, quite as much flexibility as I'd like where you know maybe it'd be nice to have individual fan brackets so that you can mount like fan hard drives fan or something just a little bit more customizability not something that I think is really gonna bother anybody's build but it's something that I just like to see again on a case that's this design customizability on an enthusiast case is probably the most important thing and that's something that they maybe missed the mark a little bit on but it's not a huge deal there and again it probably won't affect you directly now pretty much the last thing to talk about on that back section there is uh you've got your hard your uh, power supply mount down in there and it'll hold pretty large power supplies uh it seems to me that they have a recommendation i can't remember what the exact length is but i know like as an example the ax1500i is considered slightly too long for this it will fit 
In fact, I've seen builds with the AX1500i in this case. Uh, it just means your cables are gonna have even more of a tight curve to get up to the grommets because the power supply goes in pretty deep because it can actually go under this box section in the front a little bit. So even with my power supply, which is a uh, 1500 watt Silverstone and it's uh, the shortest 1500 watt on the market, it's still a pretty tight curve and um, just makes cable management a little bit tougher, but it's not a huge deal. It's just something to keep in mind is, is you're gonna have to curve those cables and it can be kind of hard to get them in there. And in fact, adding more cables to your power supply, if it's a modular power supply, is a huge pain in the butt unless you take the power supply out. So I'd recommend just plugging all the ones that you're gonna need mount the power supply and then route the cables because doing it in any other order is going to be kind of challenging. Uh, other than that, there really isn't much more on the inside. Uh, you do have these little holes in the bottom of the case that you could potentially run tubing through if you wanted to do like an external radiator or something weird like that. Uh, and you've also got tons of space to manage cables, maybe put fan hubs or LED controller hubs or all kinds of stuff like that, especially if you don't use a full 560 millimeter on both sides and you move like say you have a 360 and you put it towards the top, you have a lot of space there where you could stack stuff and do all kinds of uh, crazy accessory mounting in there. So lots of space and uh, really when it comes down to it, I think this case is an incredibly good design. And uh, honestly, there, there's so much space in the back for cable management that you could do cable extensions and you're still not gonna feel uh, you know, frustrated by, uh, you know, say you wanna do custom cabling but you did extensions instead of re-sleeving your power supply you're gonna have plenty of room still for doing cable management in there. And even if you go with, like I said, the uh, 80 millimeter rads in push pull, you're still probably gonna be able to manage cables decently well. It's just gonna be a little bit more challenging. So in conclusion, I think it is a beautiful looking case that presents the system really, really, really well. It's definitely a, uh, a custom water cooling friendly case. That's exactly what it was built for. I'm gonna be doing a custom loop in this in the future, uh, just not, not immediately. So I have this kind of janky setup where I've got my radiator just sitting here because the mount there for fans really isn't proper for mounting a radiator it's just for mounting a fan on that box unit there so I just have it literally resting in there uh, so if you're gonna be doing this make sure you're going with air cooling a like single 120 or 140 millimeter rad could potentially fit up in the top um, that's gonna be tough and mounting one on the bottom is definitely not easy uh, but really you want to do air cooling or a custom loop in my personal opinion Overall though, it is a really good looking case. It is overall really well built too. It's heavy, it's made out of steel, not aluminum. So keep in mind, it is very heavy. It weighs 54 pounds empty. It is just a monster. And a uh, little bit of quality control stuff that I'd like to see some improvement on, but nothing that is an absolutely like huge deal. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment down in the section below. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know if you're gonna be potentially buying this case and doing some crazy stuff in it. It is a wonderful case for enthusiast builds, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, don't forget to check out all the links in the description that go to our website, our forums, our various social media, and stuff like that. And um, thank you, everybody, for watching.